here, and then creates what you're talking about, that lower distal portion um, that gets tight. The stretch that we're gonna show, it goes through the whole line, because we're trying to get high, right? That's the guy that's really tight. Um, what this does, the muscle, but it pulls us into a more lordotic uh, position. So when I get tight, it's literally pulling me into like this Instagram girl booty, okay? <laughs> It uh, flexes the hip, as you guys know, also the spine. It does a contralateral rotation with a homolateral side bending. So does everyone know homolateral, contralateral shit? No, real quick. Contralateral opposite side. So if I'm talking about my right side, contralateral would be here. If I'm not, homolateral, same side, all right? So it does a homolateral side bending. So same side, contralateral rotation when it gets tight. Right, one. And then they both have a synergistic relationship with reflexing, but usually it's one that gets tight that starts manipulating. And when it does, it, it messes with the pelvis. And so the pelvis, two bones, sacrum. This is where scoliosis comes from. So the basement is what we look at of the feet and the pelvis. The feet will manipulate the pelvis, the pelvis will manipulate the sacrum, that travels up the spine and fascial tension, okay? so. If I have a hip flexor tight on this side that's pulling me into out flare, it's gonna manipulate the sacrum and go up my spine and now I'm gonna have shoulder issues, right, because of that rotation. Um, the body's gonna consistently compensate and so stretching this guy, there's a lot of nerves that innervate out of this fascia. When it gets tight, you like, you might have horrible digestion or you like, you can't go to the bathroom. You have no idea why, so it doesn't have anything to do with the food, nothing like that, no ends like, if it's not getting a conduction, it can't be making enzymes. It can't be doing things or telling the body what it needs to do, right? So he's found that there's a lot of carryover in these postures and stuff to the more visceral organ system. That's kind of, uh, you, you can't really tantalize it. You can't touch it, right? It's, it's more of these things that after the fact that he created this, like he gets all of this feedback, like, oh, by the way, this, this, and this. Um, so it's nice to free up these areas where these nerves are run through, right? So we can have a good conduction. Uh, to the rest of the body, right? We need to be able to speak and talk. So, Jeff, so <clears throat> when you're talking about this as a tool, mm -hmm. um, what about the the actual act of diagnosis? So, for instance, like you, a lot of people won't identify or notice, or you might not generally tend to notice or identify someone's hip mm -hmm. being slightly off or or notice mm -hmm. that you know they're they're pronating in a specific manner that might lead to For sure. you know the knees bending and then the hips starting to twist mm -hmm. and then right absolutely so as a trainer um i mean part of the assessment is like what's their posture like mm -hmm. right exactly. how, how are their feet fitting in their mm -hmm. shoes For sure. uh, maybe you know maybe part of the assessment is just identifying hey you need an insert Right, yes. yep. for your arches mm -hmm. to properly go, so your knees start bending out properly, you get a straight line through the hips. Mm -hmm. Like identifying all those types of things before you even get onto the floor, so that you know if they're yeah. if they're complaining of lower back pain, let's get that deeper to that. For sure, and you, and you you definitely want to look at your clients and figure out what's going on, but don't get handcuffed with a diagnosis. One because the body's super smart and you're not; it just it's smarter than you. It's gonna piss you off. Um, there's times where I can diagnose stuff and figure like, hey, this is what's going on. And then there's a time where it's like, dude, her foot's pronating, knees going in, but she's rotating the opposite way. Like, what, like what's going on? Is that my diagnosis? Am I not seeing it? You start getting into these like, oh, handcuff. Just work with the area. Like she's got low back pain. We call it attract, attack the dragon. What's around that area, right? Boom, boom. What manipulates this area? Let's start working with it. Let's see what we get, right? Because you'll never know. Right, and you don't want to like handcuff yourself and be like, ah, I don't know the diagnosis. Just get them moving, right? Nine times out of ten, if this lady has back pain, right? She's got something going on. She's probably in a, an anterior pelvic tilt. Little things you can do to help her out. But yeah, it is important. Like when I look at somebody right as they walk up, I, I'm going through, you know, foot's doing this, all all the stuff. It's good information to have in your back pocket for a diagnosis and to create a program. But from that program, you, you use it as a tool. Every posture is an assessment. Every time they move, it's an assessment. Oh shit, that didn't work well. I'm gonna go here. Some people, the cues are different. They don't, like, you just have to try stuff. Put your hands on people. But yeah, absolutely. Um, so, for the psoas, um, I wanna get everyone in the same working posture, 
Um, so it's not different, right? You want to get in the posture the same every time, like I'm squatting, right? I don't want to have a ritual. So when I fuck up, I know what I messed up on, okay? So if you guys have a compressive knee issue, like your knee touches the ground, it hurts, you can use a mat. Just be careful that that mat height is going to manipulate the pelvis over time. So we want to try to get away from that prop if we can, okay? So we get into what's called a serving knight position. <laughs> so 45 degrees off the pelvis, knees greater than 90, because we're going to move into this 90 degree position. Okay, so very important, knee is greater than 90 on the start. Knee is underneath the hip, and my ankle is outside of my knee. So I'm going into that internal rotation position, right? Like, I'm here. So think about pushing that ankle out, knee down, internal rotation, hips are in one line. Okay, get the top of that foot on the floor. From this position, we're gonna get a starting tension in the hip flexor. So I'm gonna tuck the tailbone, bring the ribs together. You should feel an initial tension in that distal portion. Everyone feel that? From that position, we hold. Every position, we're adding more tension. So don't let this tuck go. I'm gonna move the pelvis away from the down knee. So I'm gonna translate to the side just a bit. Knee's gonna come over the foot to 90 as I'm tucking. I'm gonna come down onto my knee to take weight off of the tailbone. Chest is up, but now I'm gonna to try to tuck my tailbone and round the lumbar spine, right? So think about like when we tucked in the warm up, anterior and posterior pelvic tilt, I'm tucking, yeah. Ribs down, chin's tucked, I'm pushing through the crown of the head. Breathing into the diaphragm, you push that stomach out, okay? Don't lose tension here. I'm gonna reach the homolateral arm, same side arm, external rotation, reach. That's gonna add tension to the system here. If you're very in tune with your body, you can feel how that increases in the stretch. Now from here, I'm gonna lift the side of my rib cage up towards the ceiling, right? So we're doing a contralateral side bend to reverse what the muscle does. Three, two, one. Slowly relax and come back in. So for all those movements, we're tacking the really big pieces first, and then we go into the other pieces. So like, I go into extension because it goes into flexion, right? We tackle these big portions first, and then you saw as the end, like as we lifted that rib cage a bit, I'm now dealing with, you know, when it manipulates the ilium. Very small, so we start big, and then we go into the smaller micro movements. All right, so I want you guys to kind of see what this looks like, and I also, I kind of don't like showing pictures because then everyone tries to make it look like the picture. It doesn't The picture doesn't mean shit. Every person's going to look different. It's all about how they're creating tension through the body. Um, you guys are really welcome to take a picture of this. Just don't just don't put it online. I'm giving you trouble a little bit. But so basically with myofascial stretching, we look at a muscle's full global movement, right? So we have here the muscle action for each part, for the hip, the pelvis, the ilium. So the pelvis would be the whole thing, all three bones. Ilium is just one side. Okay. And then you have the lumbar spine. So it manipulates a lot of areas, as you can see. What we want to do is we want to reverse all of them. So we attack the opposite fascial line. Okay. So you're just reversing all of the movements. We're going with big rocks first. Down to our little rocks. Okay. But it's all just about creating tension and trying to find that stretch. Like I'm saying, for everybody, it might be different. I don't care how it looks. It's how it feels and how I can palpate. Okay, so I'm gonna get one of you guys down here. I'll take you guys through it so you guys can watch um, what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna have you guys break apart and do them on you guys, okay? Because I want you guys getting in here and understanding what's going on. So, let's go Christian, get over here. All right, so let's go down into that serving knife position. We'll go one knee forward. All right, so let's get this knee greater than 90. All right, so for him, right? Hip, knee, come back just a bit, starting in one line. Right, he's got the outside driving out. Very important here, pushing the hip out, or sorry, pushing the heel out, okay? Foot's down, he's gonna tuck the tailbone and try to push the belly button behind me and bring the ribs in, okay? Now from here, he's gonna slightly rotate, drop this hip, he's gonna rotate, or sorry, side, or translate to the side and then forward. So really, if you just bend that front knee over your toes, it's gonna happen, okay? But I want you guys to know that that pelvis has to go to the side. You're gonna tuck more, and I want you to come down onto your knee with your elbow more. No, 
bring your boots in. So you see what he's doing right now? How he's, her, that's the hip flexor on. Yeah. Right, that guy's tight. You want to bring the ribs down, push into me. There you go, more, more, more. All right, now I want you to reach forward more. You feel that? Oh yeah, yeah keep tucking, let's go same side on. You see how I'm managing his tension here? Mm -hmm. This might be super weird because you're like, dude, I'm touching my client like, like crazy. You might have to do that. So this guy reaches out, same side, external rotation and reach. Good. Good, tuck more, push into me here. Think about rounding your spine. Yep, right there, boom. Keep that, keep that. Three, two, one. Slowly relax. So a lot of like, when you guys see people stretching the hip flexor, like they're always like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like dude, it's, yeah. Like, it's turning the hip flexor on, it's using it as a brake. So right as you go back, the hip flexor is like, no! It snaps the spine forward. So you wanna have those ribs down. And it, it seems awkward because you feel like you're like falling over. But what we're trying to do is get the straight line along the floor. I'm still growing through the crown of the head. And I'm just trying to manipulate that back of the pelvis as I'm here. Now, bringing the spine up. So it's like I'm taking the, the pelvis, oh, sorry, I'm taking the psoas up this way and down, stretching it from both sides. So, so a lot of people think when they're trying to do that stretch, they're actually trying to stretch this side of the body. In an actual body, you're trying to stretch this side. Of the so body. there, yeah, and there is a way like you can you can side bend and get into that top portion, um, and all that's fine too. You know, um, this is just a way to take the fascial, the iliac fascia that connects through here through tension, because when we look at tissue, it's all about quality. So I, as you guys have probably know, you sit for a long time, you stand up, and you feel stiff, right? That's the fascia changing composition for lack of force. So you get up, you walk around, you're like, oh, I just did a mobility session, I feel super good, like I'm, like I'm more mobile. If you just continually did that all the time, you would never, ever be tight. So it's all about quality. So let's say, you know, Mrs. Jones, she's super tight, she, she's sitting all the time. So when you stand up, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna present this. I'm gonna have my hips still in flexion. I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna flare my spine. I'm gonna be an extension of my spine and I'm flaring, right? So you'd be standing walking around like this. What we need to do now is the quality of that tissue horrible. So when I come through and I have them tuck, we're adding tension. So the, the composition of that is gonna relax and change. It's gonna become more elastic and less plastic, right? So you're literally just changing, like, if you look at like the plantar fascia, over time it becomes so tight it'll rupture because it's not getting moved. So you can get people to move from a plastic state to a more elastic state. Um, it might not come back the same, but you can increase that tissue quality, the hydration and all that stuff. And that's literally what we're doing. Um, the most important part, okay? Um, a lot of other nerd shit, the, the fascia has tubules. And so when we're rotating and moving, it helps the water travel through the tubules to the, to the fascia. And this is another thing that's going on there. All right, so grab a partner, all right? I want you guys to focus on the movements, right? Starting from the starting posture, moving out to the side and getting you guys tucked, okay? Um, I'm gonna come around and uh, yeah, any questions, let me know, all right? Um, if, you guys, if you guys wanna get a piece of paper and write down like steps or whatever, or you guys can remember, that's fine. Whatever you guys wanna do, I don't care, I'm here for you. I'm not certification. I need to get it. Oh, go.